with the graphics card market looking like it is right now, I know the question on a lot of your guys' minds right now could be like, should I jump in at launch tomorrow, like mashing F5, trying to get myself a 3060 Ti? That's a question I'm honestly asking myself. I currently have a RTX 2070, which is still getting the job done, but definitely also showing its age especially compared to the performance that we've been seeing in this new generation of cards. And I'm honestly still deciding whether I'm gonna upgrade this generation or skip a generation. And personally, I game at ultra wide 1440p. You guys might game at other resolutions. Uh, so that's what I'm interested in the most, but we're gonna talk about all sorts of things. Who should upgrade here? Who does it make sense to upgrade for? And does it make sense to try to jump in right now at the launch window? The reason that's a big question, I'll just talk about that right now, is if you wanna get one of these, at least at MSRP, the launch date is one of your best chances to get one. Yes, they're gonna sell out instantly, but a lot of people, including scalpers, <laughs> will actually get one. I would expect to see supply of these cards more along the lines of the supply that we saw for the 3070, since it's more of that class of GPU based on that same, um, what is it, the, I don't forget the exact SKU number or whatever, but it's based on that same GPU. So uh, I would be expecting, again, similar numbers to what we saw with the 3070, and a lot of people did actually get them at launch. And the, uh, so if you wanna jump in and get one and not pay scalper prices, you could at least try to hop in here when they launch. Now, who should do that? If you're trying to game at 4K, I don't think I'd recommend that. By the way, I wanna mention, okay, so for anybody new to my channel, my channel's only two months old. I do not get sent re review samples. If you're looking for uh, independent reviews from me, that's not what this is. I watched a bunch of the major reviewers this morning. I read a bunch of the review articles and I'm basing my opinions on what I saw in all of those. The graphs I'm choosing to display today came from the Hardware Unboxed review, to be, but to be clear, this was not the only review that I watched to base these opinions off of. That's just where I'm taking most of these graphs from, although I do have one from Linus as well. Okay, 4K is not what I'd recommend this card for unless you really wanna turn down settings because 4K high quality 18 game average from Hardware Unboxed. By the way, keep in mind, he did not have a Founders Edition card. So his custom model card here might be having uh, somewhere in the you know 3% better than a Founders Edition type performance, but nothing to really throw these charts off any worse than you'd see from looking at a reviewer who just reviewed different games that would average differently. Uh, the reason I chose the Hardware Unboxed reviews here is not only does he have nice looking bar graphs, but it was one of the most thorough as far as the competition that we were measured against. So we can see it up against a lot of cards. A lot of the other major reviewers didn't throw in the 5700 XT as a competitor. And that's interesting to me because right now, until AMD actually launches their mid-range and lower range cards, the 5700 XT is the AMD $400 uh, competitor to this, and it's a much better value than the previous uh, RTX card, the, what was it, 2060 Super, that was that $400 competitor from NVIDIA. So I'm very interested in how this comp uh, performs against the 5700 XT, but at 4K, honestly, I'm gonna say, this is just not the card. Um, it's just, you know, Sure, it can average around 60 frames per second right now, but that's averaging this, and some of those games are older than others. I, I, I really don't think if you're buying a new card right now for 4K that this is the card for you, but I think most of you know that, and if you're gaming at 4K, you're probably looking to spend more than, uh, more than $400 on your GPU anyway. All right, so let's look at 1440p. This is where this card starts to make sense. We're getting averages here, uh, over uh, 100 frames per second with the 1% mins averaging at 92. So again, this is much more the kind of performance you'd be looking for. So I think 1440p, that's where this card starts to make sense. Now, compared to like a 3070, it's not even much of a step down. So for $400 instead of $500, this is a really good deal if you're comparing it to the 3070, where it becomes, uh, and again, against the previous generation 2060, uh, 2060 Super, it is a massive, Massive performance gain. So if you're currently sitting on a 2060 Super and you're looking to upgrade, this is definitely worth it. And if you want to upgrade right now, you're going to see a huge performance gain and be very happy with it. Now, if you're currently sitting on a 5700 XT, I don't think it's worth paying the money to upgrade. Um, you're going to get better performance. And unless you just absolutely have to have ray tracing and DLSS right now, I just don't think upgrading from a 5700 XT makes sense here. 
Uh, that's my personal performance. Now, find your current card in this list, like mine's the 2070, and I would get a pretty big performance gain if I jumped to this card. So it's I'm actually considering a jump to this card. Um, uh, again, though, you know, uh, some people are thinking, oh, but it only has eight gigabytes of VRAM. Well, for one thing, you're paying in the $400 range here right now, so that's something to consider. You're only gonna get so much VRAM, although the AMD cards that are yet to come out probably will have more, probably more in the like 12 gigabyte range, that type of a thing. Um, so, I mean, if you wanna keep waiting, that's one thing, but I'm talking about should you jump in at launch now? Well, at 1440p, I don't imagine the eight gigabytes of VRAM being much of an issue, to be honest, um, at least anytime soon and by the time it would become an issue, I don't think the 3060 Ti would be hitting all ultra settings and everything at really good frame rates anyway, and you might turn things down slightly anyway, regardless of the eight gigabytes of VRAM. So I don't think that's a big, uh, big factor to consider at 1440p, and like I said, 4K probably doesn't make sense for this card anyway. Now, 1080p, I think this card also makes a whole lot of sense. You're getting great average performance here, Again, if you already have a 5700 XT though, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. But again, if you're sitting on like a 2070 like I am or a 2060 Super, you'd be getting better performance. But those cards at 1080p are already delivering really good performance at 1080p. So if you're playing at 1080p and you already have a card like that, it might not be worth upgrading. But if you're sitting back here on maybe like a 1070, a lot of people might be sitting there on a 1070 thinking about should I upgrade? Well, you're getting a massive performance jump from a 1070. So if you're not currently happy with your performance, uh, this does seem to deliver great performance at 1080p. And uh, again, just make sure that your current card isn't already doing that or else it's kind of a waste, right? Now, I, the thing is though, even though this is an average of 18 games, which does an awesome job at giving us relative performance of these cards in a very fair manner, Keep in mind that certain titles are going to be incredibly favored towards one architecture or the other. Let's take a look at Dirt 5. So Dirt 5 is a title that is incredibly uh, AMD optimized compared to uh, Nvidia. This is one of those games where like the 6800 XT uh, actually stomps on the 3090. It's one of those ones, right? Even the 6800 at 1440 Ultra beating the 3090. It's one of those games, right? So if you look at this one, keep in mind that this is swaying those averages a little bit. It's one of the things that's actually keeping the 5700, um, uh, sorry, the 5700 XT so close in these averages to the 3060 Ti. Because in this game, the 5700 XT, that old last gen $400 AMD card is actually beating the 3060 Ti. So there's certain games like this where they're just very, very favorable to AMD. And that is one thing about the hardware unboxed reviews if you compare it to some other reviewers. If they don't include games like Dirt 5, uh, their averages are gonna sway a little bit differently because these games are so skewed towards AMD. And I'm not knocking them for including this. This is a major game that a lot of people are interested in. And this is just the reality. It performs much, much better on AMD. Now there's also games like Watch Dogs Legion, which are more of an Nvidia partner type of game. And we have, we don't, uh, this is speculation, but I know a lot of people are interested in Cyberpunk. And based on what we've seen on the system requirements for Cyberpunk and where it's placed AMD cards relative to Nvidia cards, it's looking like at least at first before there's an optimization patch uh, that'll allow like AMD ray tracing, it would probably optimize for them and, and that'll be focused around console optimization. It's looking like at first, Cyberpunk is gonna be heavily Nvidia favored, at least based on their performance charts that they've released. Now, again, in a game like this, we see the 3060 Ti um, doing uh, much better than, for example, a 5700 XT. So again, depending on what you're comparing this to and which particular game you're looking at, this is uh, going to heavily heavily influence the not just the averages that we're getting here, uh, but also maybe your purchasing decision if there's one of these games that you're actually really interested in. Now, this is another thing that I wanna bring up here is in certain games at 1440p, the 3060 Ti is still really gonna struggle at Ultra. Um, 
you know, your minimums here are not staying above 60 and the average is just barely at 60. So that's a game that's coming out right now. And if you're planning on hanging onto this card for two, three, maybe even four years as a 1440p card, just be aware that I would not predict this to be able to stay at ultra settings above 60 frames per second in future graphically demanding releases. That being said, I think if you lower a few key settings, you're gonna be just fine. Um, so do keep that in mind. Now, some of you guys are interested in more like a professional workload. I'm not that interested in that other than video rendering <laughs> uh, for my YouTube stuff. Uh, but I will say that you could pop over to the Linus review. One nice thing about uh, the Linus review, other than it being very brief, <laughs> is that it can, um, show some blender applications, right? And it does look like the newer architecture here is actually giving this a really good performance in, in uh, some of the pr uh, productivity things like blender. For example, the 3060 uh, Ti here, since lower is better in this one, uh, is beating the 2080 Ti. And um, so this is one of those those uh, situations where if you can see, if Blender or something like that is something that you're interested in, keep that in mind. This newer architecture could be having a better performance jump over previous generations than the gaming uh, benchmarks are telling us. Now, some people are thinking, what about ray tracing? What about DLSS? All of that. Well, if we jump into Watch Dogs Legion as a new ray tracing and DLSS, uh, representative. I realize I'm blocking this a bit, so I can just make myself disappear. And once I find my disappear button, there's my disappear button. Okay, so if we take a look at this, notice here that at 1440p ultra, if we kick on ray tracing, this is really not a ray tracing ultra card unless you are happy with 30 frames per second. So if you're happy with that console experience, lock in 30 frames per second, and you're okay with that, then fine, this could be a 1440p ultra ray tracing card for now. But I think most of us as PC gamers, and especially if you're spending $400 on a graphics card, you know, you, that 30 frames per second is probably not the performance target that you're looking for. Now keep in mind that in certain titles with DLSS 2.0, DLSS is really impressive and can boost that to a more playable frame rate, although still not at that 60 frames per second that you're getting at native average when you just don't have ray tracing on. Now here's what's kind of cool is you don't you can use DLSS without ray tracing in titles that support DLSS to get just better frame rates. Um, which would help you a lot right here because your averages being lower than 60 isn't great, but um, getting just DLSS quality settings on without any ray tracing, that might be something that's a little more interesting to look at. And again, you can see how this compares to the 2060 Super and the 6800 uh, uh, with these down here. Now let's look at 1080p where, okay, 1080p this might make more sense for the occasional ray tracing game. Again, same uh, Watchdog Legion's Ultra. And we can see here that we got ray tracing Ultra. We're getting in the 40s, right? We're getting in the 40s, ray tracing medium, still not in the 60s. If you kick on the DLSS, you can actually have pretty playable 60 frames per second with the quality DLSS. And then ray tracing medium with the DLSS on is probably where if I was gonna do some ray tracing, that's probably where I would be on this card. Um, and again, you can compare that to the 2060 Super and the 6800 here in terms of those levels of performance. Okay guys, so would I recommend this as a ray tracing card? I don't think this is the, the kind of card you're gonna buy for ray tracing, but it is a nice to have. And if you're comparing it to something like uh, maybe you could find a 5700 XT in stock right now for about 400 bucks. This is not just a better performing card on average, but it's also does have the DLSS and ray tracing uh, that you have. Now, we if you can just wait a couple of months, we'll have better stock, stock available on cards and you'll also see what AMD's competitors to these are gonna be. Uh, so keep that in mind. So I would say that, um, you know, you could occasionally kick on ray tracing as long as it also supports DLSS. Um, at least at 1080p, I probably wouldn't do it at 1440 myself. Uh, but you know, like I said, your performance standards could vary. And then um, uh, another nice thing that Hardware Unboxed does is compare pricing. And this does currently, if you look at um, 
what things are actually selling for, and compare this at the MSRP, does deliver the current best uh, frames per dollar value. Uh, and do keep in mind that this is comparing what cards are actually available for on Newegg. Um, versus their MSRPs. And again, at launch, you can get some of these uh, 3060 Ti's at MSRP, but we don't know what that's gonna look like afterwards. All right, so final thoughts here. Once again, I think at 1440p, this card makes a lot of sense if you're not already happy with your current level of performance and find your card here and see what that performance jump looks like. If you're uh, already getting reasonable performance, or especially if you're at like 1080p, you're already getting reasonable performance, might not be worth the upgrade. Uh, in general, this is a pretty compelling card for the price. Personally, since I'm doing ultra wide 1440p, I think I want a little bit more than this. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. I'm not gonna be mashing F5 tomorrow. If you are, you could go ahead and let me know in the comments section. What are you guys' thoughts about this card? Um, and uh, as always, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't yet, you can consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in PC-related content, especially technology and gaming. Focus on that, but not exclusively. Um, and I hope you guys have an excellent day.